talking about the idea of impulse and the Dirac delta function and how they're related. So impulse is just the change in momentum, uh, basically as we apply a force to a mass. Uh, and so we can think of another way to write the impulse is really the area under the curve from time A to time B. Uh, we'll call it capital F of T dt. And so our capital F of T function here, so basically this is our force. And so impulse is basically the area under the curve between A and B as far as time goes. So another way to write this would be then since force is equal to mass times acceleration, then we could say basically split up our f of t into mass times acceleration, which is a different a than our bound, right? Here this a is a constant, this is actually acceleration. Uh, and another way to say that, remember acceleration is change in velocity, so the integral from a to b of m times the derivative of velocity with respect to time dt. And so that's certainly going to then give us mv, where v is obviously a function of time, from a to b. And we could be a little more specific and say that this is actually equal to mv of b minus m times v of a. We could factor out the m's, but we'll leave it there. So the idea is it's the change in the momentum between time a and b. Now when we talk about momentum, it's very possible that time a and time b are very, very close together. Uh, impulse happens something uh, like when you're golfing and you hit a golf ball with a golf club, for example, impulse is applied over a very, very small amount of time. So often we will look at A and B being very, very close together. When we talk about the concept of unit impulse, we will be looking at this function here. So it is a delta function, that's delta sub A of T, so it's a function of time. And it's a limit-defined function where we have basically a, uh, the limit as a approaches zero. And I've basically given you some idea of what happens to the graph of this function. So this is about when a is equal to one. This is about when a is equal to a half. This is about when a is equal to 0.2. And this is when a is very, very close to zero. Uh, we'll never have a exactly zero because we'd have an undefined expression here dividing by zero. But we look at the limit as a approaches zero. Uh, basically what this is, this is some sort of, uh, it kind of looks like a probability function. Uh, and what we get is we get that as a approaches zero, the function is basically defined as zero everywhere uh, except uh, when t is actually zero and we get basically an infinite spike here uh, on the vertical axis. So we get an infinite spike and everywhere else the function is basically zero. Uh, and that's basically what happens to the function as we allow a to approach zero. The way we will be looking at unit impulse will be at some value of t. Uh, so in particular at t equals some value, we called it t sub zero here. Uh, and this is the expression that we will see more often than not. Uh, so our delta sub a of t minus t sub zero. So you can think of it in a way, this is sort of related to our unit step function where we had the step function and we had t minus a. So in a way, really, our t sub zero is just replacing a here concept that we are, we have this infinite spike, but we're actually shifting it over to some value now, t sub zero. Uh, and a property of why this is called the unit impulse is that the integral from zero to infinity of this function is actually equal to one. And so that's why we say that it is unit impulse, because that integral there is one unit. Uh, some interesting things about that, if you think about a function being zero and having an infinite spike, 
only at one particular value and then being zero forevermore. So in other words, this function is zero almost everywhere except at one particular value at whatever t sub zero is. So, uh, and, and this sort of gets into things that we won't talk about maybe in this video, but the idea that if something is zero everywhere except for one real number value, and we have an infinite value there, if, it's, if the value of the function is zero everywhere but at one value, we would think that uh, because the width of that interval is basically zero, uh, that we should have an integral value of zero, and we get into uh, this concept of what we call the extended real numbers or the extended reals. Uh, so we won't talk too much about that because that doesn't come into play a lot when we're dealing with unit impulse in, in terms of differential equations. Uh, but there are some, some odd behaviors about this function uh, that you may find interesting. It also has a lot of uh, properties that we may use when we talk about probability density functions as well. The biggest thing we want to remember though when we're dealing with these in terms of differential equations when we look at the Laplace transform of this unit impulse function um, or as some people would call that the Dirac delta function this expression here so when we take the Laplace transform of that Dirac delta function we just want to remember that it's e to the negative st sub zero uh, basically what we're doing if you think of your a as your t sub zero right, then this is basically what we were talking about in the previous videos where this would just be e to the minus a s is basically what we're saying here. So we want to remember that we'll be dealing with that a uh, fair amount. Let's look at how we may solve a differential equation involving uh, unit impulse function. So we have y prime plus y equal to, and then we have our Dirac delta function. We have delta of t minus 1 and an initial condition y of 0 equal to 2. So the first thing we'll do is work out Laplace transform. So we want to remember the Laplace transform of our function y. Remember y is actually a function of t here, right? So our Laplace transform of y, remember, is going to be y of s, some function of s. And our Laplace transform for y prime, so you want to remember how to do Laplace transforms of derivatives from a previous video here. So this is s times y of s minus y of 0 and we'll need the Laplace transform for the expression on the right side which we just mentioned the definition of that so the Laplace transform of delta function t minus 1 would be then e to the negative s t sub 0 right which here is actually e to the negative s times 1 which we would just say e to the minus s for this because in this expression t sub 0 is actually equal to 1 right there. Okay, so plugging all of the information in we have from Laplace transforms that would give us s y of s minus and then instead of using y sub 0 I'll plug in our initial condition here 2 plus y, the Laplace transform of y was y of s equal to the Laplace transform of the right hand side e to the minus s. So if I go ahead and add 2 to both sides and then I gather the y sub s terms so we get y sub s and we have s plus 1 copies of y sub s on the left hand side and then over here I'll just call this 2 plus e to the minus s and to solve for y of s that will will divide by the s plus 1 term so that will give us y of s equal to 2 over s plus 1 plus e to the minus s over s plus 1 Okay, so then moving on with that, we'll go ahead and look at this expression here and take the inverse Laplace transform, right? So we'll do the inverse Laplace transform of y of s, which is basically of every term, right? Equal to the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s plus 1, plus the inverse Laplace transform e to the minus s over s plus 1. 
So left-hand side here, the inverse Laplace transform of y of s is y, or I'll call it y of t here, right, because the Laplace transform of y is y of s. So here we look at this, basically we can think of this as 2 times 1 over s plus 1, so that'll give us 2, and then the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 is going to be e to the minus t. Plus, and so here we can again think of this as e to the minus s times 1 over s plus 1 here. So the idea here is that we have e to the minus s a, and then we're looking at this here. So this is actually in terms of uh, something involving the unit step function with t minus 1, right, with our exponential out front. So if we look at the inverse Laplace transform of this, if you viewed the previous video where we have combinations of functions and the unit step function, this actually turns out to be e to the negative t minus 1 times the unit step function, so u of t minus 1. So we get this expression here, and we could certainly go ahead and graph that or write it a different way. We'll go ahead and leave it in this form, but that's just one example of how we would deal with a differential equation involving Dirac delta function or unit impulse.